Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, Dr. Fukuyama, and, and to the fellows, um, I think it's quite clear from the three speeches we've just heard uh, why uh, your decision to hold this forum in Georgia was a, a supremely excellent uh, choice. And I think the three speeches also demonstrate, um, or should demonstrate to you, why the United States sees Georgia as an absolutely uh, flag-waving model of what democracy can and should look like in this part of the former Soviet space, in anywhere in the former Soviet space. What is it uh, that Georgia has done? What's the formula uh, by which it has uh, accomplished what it has accomplished so far? It's uh, done this by prioritizing basic infrastructure, roads, electricity, and telecommunications, things that we sometimes take for granted, but without which you cannot have a modern state. It's done this by rooting out corruption, first at the petty level, and then by going after elite corruption. It's done this by holding elections that meet high international standards, and then respecting the outcome of those elections. And it's done it by declaring its commitment to uphold due process and the rule of law, even in the conduct of controversial legal proceedings. And it's done it by returning to the traditions of ethnic and religious tolerance that Georgia was known for throughout the centuries. I was here 21 years ago with the CSCE mission to Georgia. And as, as the Prime Minister said, you know, recalling what life was like two decades ago, uh, the transformation is remarkable. I hope you will use this forum to explore just how this happened, what the keys to success were, what to do, and what not to do. The main point, though, that I'd like to leave with you today, and it's been touched on in the earlier remarks, is that this, this process is not happening in a vacuum. There's a broader um, arena in which these changes are taking place. And what I emphasize is that Georgia is sitting on three uh, important regional vectors, and its continued progress depends very much on its ability to cope with and shape trends along these vectors. The first vector, of course, has been mentioned, and that's uh, the, the, the problem that Georgia and its neighbors, and indeed the entire West, face in trying to manage uh, the north-south vector involving Georgia's massive neighbor to the north. Despite the mixed legacy of a colonial past and the dangerous tensions of today, Georgia's continued development will be directly affected by the nature of its relationship with Russia. Georgia can help guide us, outsiders, and the West in this process, just as we have a part to play in ensuring Georgia's security and prosperity. The second vector is an east-west vector what is now commonly referred to as the New Silk Road. And Georgia sits squarely astride this vital corridor. What began as Afghan transit now opens up new possibilities for commercial traffic between Europe and the Far East. Georgia's ports and railroads and highways already give it a uniquely important place in this network. And with proper planning, that role can only grow and prosper. And finally, Georgia is in a position to play a role in addressing the dangerous new vector that is materializing between forces in Iraq and Syria on the one hand and in the North Caucasus on the other. Georgia's legacy of religious and ethnic tolerance and its control of its borders give it an important, important advantages in enabling it to play this increasingly important role. The United States is Georgia's strategic partner in each of these arenas, and we will continue to do our part to promote Georgia's progress as a modern state in the 21st century. From Georgia's sacrifices alongside U.S. Marines in Afghanistan to our common efforts to rebuild after the 2008 war, we are in this together. I can tell you the United States could not be more proud of this partnership and I'm confident that by the time your forum is completed, you will feel the same way. Thank you very much.